Recently, I've been doing a lot of videos on U.S. history, so I decided I, to have a short break on that and instead cover one of the most interesting characters in Russian and Mongolian history, Roman von Ungern Sternberg. Roman... Okay. Robert Nikolaus Maximilian Freiherr von Ungern Sternberg, often shortened to Baron Ungern, was born in Graz, Austria, on January 10, 1886, to a noble family. His first language was German, but he later became fluent in French, Russian, English, and Estonian. Ungun had Hungarian roots and claimed to be descended from Batu Khan. In 1888, his parents moved to Raval, the capital of the governorate of Estonia in Russia, and later the capital of modern-day Estonia under the name Tallinn. His parents divorced only three years later, his mother remarrying shortly after. At a young age, Ungun was notorious for being a ferocious bully, other bullies and parents even being terrified of him. Little Ungun was especially known for his cruelty towards animals, at the age of 12 attempting to strangle his cousin's pet owl for no reason. On a far less horrific note, he also was very proud of his arist aristocratic background. Despite being proud of his German heritage, he also was a Russian nationalist, identifying mostly with the Russian Empire. Whenever he was asked about how his family has distinguished itself, he would proudly announce 72 killed in wartime. Starting in 1900, Ungern attended the Nicholas I Gymnasium. By the way, gymnasium is a word for a school. His school records reveal that he was, he was an unruly student, getting into trouble with teachers for frequently breaking rules. In 1905, he left the school to fight in the Russo-Japanese War. Although it's unclear if he actually participated in the war, he was awarded the, Ru the Russo-Japanese War Medal in 1913. During this time, he also began studying Buddhism. In 1905, a peasant result revolt in Estonia burned down his estate, alongside that of many other Baltic German nobles. This entrenched his belief that the Estonian peasants were degenerate and immoral people. Soon after, Ungun Stanberg was transferred to the Pavlovsko military school in St. Petersburg. During this time, he became obsessed with the occult and furthered his studies into Buddhism. One of his cousins said that the Baron was very curious about Tibetan and Hindu philosophy. He even believed that Ungun Stanberg was clairvoyant, being able to read the minds of people around him. Ungun Stanberg was stationed with a Cossack regiment in Siberia, where he was inspired to take up a nomadic lifestyle. Alongside that, he became a heavy drinker and was prone to having a fiery temper. In one instance, an officer slashed his face with a sword during a brawl. Despite his drunkenness, he was renowned for his skills on horseback and his mastery of both the sword and the gun. Eventually, Ungun Stanberg left for gun Mongolia, where he became a Buddhist but never abandoned the Lutheran faith, blending them into one religion. Some in Mongolia believed him to be the incarnation of Genghis Khan or even Jamsaran, the god of war, while in Mongolia, he attempted to fight for the Mongolian independence from China, but Russian officials refused to allow him to do so. He arrived in western Mongolia and served as an officer for the Cossack Guard detachment. Roman von Ungern Sternberg joined frontline forces in 1914, taking part in the Russian offensive in East Prussia. Throughout the war, he gained a reputation for being extremely brave and reckless. Despite his effectiveness in battle, he was discharged for attacking another officer. Later, he was sent back to fight in the Caucasus against the Ottomans. In 1917, the February Revolu Revolution brought an end to Romanov rule in Russia. Roman von Ungern Stanberg, being a pan-monarchist and a Russian nationalist, was furious. To restore Russian morale, he formed, alongside alongside Grigory Semyonov, a separate army of Assyrian Christians to serve as an example to the Russians. After winning some minor victories over the Ottomans, Semyonov and Ungun Stanberg went east to Siberia to raise a regiment of Buryat soldiers. Following the February Revolution, the Bolsheviks started the October, October Revolution. Semyonov and Ungun vowed their allegiance to the Russian House of Romanov. 
In Manchuria, the two of them, alongside five Cossacks, disarmed 1,500 Bolshevik fighters and took over a railway where they made preparations for war. Semyonov and Ungern began a special Manchurian regiment led by Semyonov. Although both Semyonov and Ungern are seen as members of the White Army, they actually were not really, as they, have, as they had different goals from whatever goal the White Army wanted to achieve. Semyonov actually refused to acknowledge the leadership of Admiral Kolchak, choosing instead to receive most of his support from the Japanese. Not only this, but Semyonov and Ungern also had differing goals. Both were conservatives, but Semyonov was not a monarchist. Roman von Ungern Stanberg, on the other hand, believed that monarchs were only accountable to God and refused to accept anything less than an absolute monarchy. For his accomplishments, Ungern became a major general, and Semyonov trusted him to continue fighting Bolshevik forces. He reinforced his station, transforming it into a fortress to attack Reds. In 1919, the Chinese government took advantage of Russia's weakness and took over Outer Mongolia. After the fall of the Ahu party, the Chinese soldiers in Outer Mongolia felt abandoned and ravaged Mongolia. Ungan traveled to Manchuria, where he established contacts with fellow monarchists and married the Manchurian princess Elena Pavlovna G. Or rather, her name was originally just G, but she was given the name Elena Pavlovna after <clears throat> their marriage. They, communi they communicated with each other solely in English, as it was the only common language that they had. Eventually, Kolchak and his white army stood defeated, and Semyonov planned a retreat to Manchuria. As a result, Ungern broke his alliance with Semyonov and transformed his Asiatic cavalry division into a guerrilla detachment. Ungern's troops then moved to Urga, now known as Ulaanbaatar, where he suffered a defeat from Chinese forces. He then moved his troops to Setsen Khan Aimag, where he gained support from Mongol separatists, including the Bogd Khan. Borrowing strategies from Genghis Khan, Roman von Ungern Stanberg launched his next assault on Urga. His troops rescued Bogd Khan from house arrest and transported him away. After breaking into the city by blasting their way through the gates, a bloodbath occurred as both sides were using sabers. On February 4th, they finally took the city. Chinese officials and troops fled the city, killing every Mongolian that they found. While Ungern and his troops occupied the city, the soldiers plundered Chinese stores and killed Russian Jews before Ungern ordered the pillaging to end. Later in March, Ungern captured the city of, well, it's spelled like choir, but I'm not quite sure if it's pronounced like that, so I'm just going to call it choir, before returning to Urga. A detachment of Cossacks and Mongols under his leadership captured Zamyan Ud without a fight. Later, Chinese forces were chased out of Outer Mongolia altogether by Roman von Ungern Stanberg's forces. After a solemn ceremony, the Bogd Khan was restored to the throne. As a way to honor Ungern for his role in ousting the Chinese from Mongolia, the Bogd Khan gave him the title Darkon Koshoi Chin Wang. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Not only this, but Ungern was also given the title Lieutenant General by Semyonov. On February 22, 1921, Mongolia was declared an independent monarchy, making the Bogd Khan the absolute monarch. According to many witnesses, Ungern brought order by imposing street cleaning and sanitation, promoting religious life and tolerance, and reforming the economy. During this time, a Polish writer named Osendowski became friends with Ungern, later writing a book about his times in Siberia named Beasts, Men, and Gods. Roman von Ungern Stanberg's army served as an inspiration for a future Mongolian army. His army consisted of a Chinese regiment, a Japanese unit, multiple Cossack regiments, Mongol, Buryat, Tatar, Tatar, and other units, and Ungern claimed that there were 16 separate nationalities making up his army. There were also many Tibetans who served in his army. It is believed that they might have been sent by the Dalai Lama. 
Eventually, Bolshevik forces invaded Mongolia to capture Ungern. Roman von Ungern Stanberg organized an expedition to attack the Bolsheviks in Siberia, as well as fuel ongoing anti-Bolshevik rebellions. However, his expedition failed as very few people joined his cause, and many rebellions had already been squashed. Ungern attempted to capture a Russian town while the Reds moved their forces into Mongolia. Ungern was defeated in a long series of battles. The Bolsheviks entered Urga on July 6, 1921. Roman von Ungern Stanberg regrouped and tried to capture Transbaikal. They pushed deep into Russian territory, capturing many cities. He later began a retreat to Mongolia, and his troops mutinied. Ungern was found and captured by a Bolshevik detachment. After a six-hour trial, Roman von Ungern Stanberg was sentenced to be shot. Later that same day, Roman von Ungern Stanberg was shot and killed. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.